G'day, I'm Helen. Welcome to my little patch of paradise. Today, we build a fence because I have Houdini animals that like to visit the neighbours. Watch how we do it. <laughs> As always, removal of the old fence is half the job. Thankfully, Helen's brother was able to help out with his excavator and make short work of removing the old broken pine posts and patched fencing. OMW. On my way to you, good at what I do. I'm OMW, OMW. On my way to you. So while the boys are busy taking out the poles, I'm just going behind and winding up the wire, being really careful to make sure that all the wire is underneath and not flicking up into my face or my arms. Um, I've just used the bolt cutters then just to clip it so that I can tie that off to make that one whole bundle. While we are demolishing things and, and taking things down, it does pay to be really neat um, and always keep your ends well secured so that you know there's nothing left in the paddock for any of the livestock and when you're loading it on the trailer there's no danger to you getting hit by wire or anything like that. Um, we're lucky enough to have had the excavator to give us a nice even area that's all cleaned up. It's really important to have a good base of clean area before you start to put up your new fence. Let's get into it. So I want my fence to last a long time. I'm not going to use these wooden um, end assemblies this time round. Instead, I'm going to go for the stock post steel assembly. So putting in one of these ends is really easy. You just need the right tool. And I've got one of them right here. Hello. Good at what I do. I'm OMW. Watch me walk away. Putting myself on display. One, two, three a day. Now you'll see there's a red mark that you normally drive these to that's ground level. I'm leaving that red mark up just a little bit out of the ground and I'm approximating about half the rise between this red mark and where the base plate of the end assembly is going to be because that'll help me make sure that I get a nice straight connection with my bottom tie back. Is it moving it? Yeah, about that okay. much each time. top tip let go at the bottom of every stroke and it just saves your hands from a bit of blistering okay. that's it end assemblies done so now that both of our end assemblies are in we're going to attach a ground wire and run that out um, and strain that up so that we have a good straight line to start our new fence love this piece of equipment it's great really easy to wind wire off and on so it's a dual purpose so all of my livestock are on this side of the fence uh, so we're going to tie off all wires on this side just to give it a bit of added strength um, as this one's going to be the base this ground wire is going to be the base for my fence we're going to make sure that we tie it off with the correct knots and i'll give you guys a tip you don't always need high tensile wire i'm currently using murray's medium tensile well and truly strong enough for what i need really easy to use very pliable So now that we've got our wire tied off at the end post, we can strain up our ground line, keep it nice and straight for our posts. Okay, just because your wire is tight, do not assume that it is straight. What you need to do, every few, maybe 20 metres or so, lift your wire up, just let your arm hang like a pendulum and then drop it and continue that along the way and that will give you a nice straight base. Now we've got our ground wire set, all I have to do is to put in the diagonal. Really easy. Now we set the ground plate. Now we insert the tie back. 
And then just tighten it up. Because we're building a steel fence, I wanted good strength and good durability. So I've gone, I haven't skimped, I've gone with stock post ute pack of steel fencing posts. They are dipped, not spray painted, so you will get longevity and good strong steel. The ute pack makes it so convenient for transportation and ease of use. All you need to do is to undo four bolts and you can remove them one at a time. You watch me walk away, putting myself on display. One, two, three a day. I'm on my way, on my way. I'ma have you on tiptoes, watching my diamond after glow. I know you wanna take me home. I'm on my way, on my way. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm so driving the post in is really easy. Uh, just need to make sure that you're wearing good ear protection. Um, that when you bring it up and let it down that you remove your hands that prevents you from getting blisters and whatnot Try and always stay five mil off your center line your straight line and just for ease of back um, Try and pop your driver on before you actually lift the stock post up So the next job for Molly and I is to clip off our plane wires before we get to run our mesh. So we're using five lines of wire on this fence so that our mesh is amply secured and supported because I can tell you my sheep are Houdinis. So the white marks on the stock post make it really easy to get your wire at the right height. This fencing system has got some really well thought out advantages about it that really helps the inexperienced fencer like me. <laughs> helps if I put in the right hole, hey. For my fencing, having strong, easy to use wire was really important. So I decided to go for Murray Stiff Stay Acreage Fencing. This is two mil high tensile wire. It has a 15 centimeter picket spacing, which means my Houdini sheep will not go through it. Now we get to the fun, exciting part of running out our mesh. Now, what you need to do is to make sure that you have your large squares up the top and your small squares at the bottom because you do not want to get all the way down there and then have to flip your fence. Because the end of the roll is pre-stripped, makes it really easy for tying off. Tying off with this stuff is a breeze. Just make sure you keep your picket wire straight up and down on the post. Then your fence will be perfectly level. Now we could just run this down the fence line by hand, but I've got something even better. Wait. our fence is too long for one roll so we're going to use the second roll we're going to tie it off and we're going to join them in the middle with one, something that is called a gut strain gut strain <laughs> seriously the horsely wholesale runner wire runner has made this job so easy for us because we're joining two rolls of wire we're going to require two straining boards so fixing the strainer boards is really easy just make sure you line it up with your picket wire and join them together and then secure Okay, just a little tip. 
use some wire to lift your fence up off the ground while you're straining it and it will give you a nice even job just tie it loosely in the center of the posts you don't need to tie everyone just a few on the way up crimping is awkward but it's the strongest way of joining them So the only job left to do now is to clip our mesh to our save wires and we do that with three clips per panel. If you like great gear, good tips and inspiring stories, make sure you subscribe now. Beautiful. Now we'll just do that one more time. Oh really? Yep. Just say gut strain again. <laughs> gut strain. <laughs> oh, it is fun. <laughs> <laughs>